Hey, and welcome back to Ancient Ways for Modern Days. My name is Mike Freeman, pastor at Valley Christian Fellowship in Longview, Washington. And today we are in Luke chapter 18. Now, yesterday we were in chapter 17 and we looked at this idea that we are, we're but unworthy servants to the Lord. And so that recognition of like, we don't come to him saying, here's my expectation from you. And yet today we're gonna, we're gonna look at the other side of that coin where, where the heavenly father is a good father. And he desires to do good in our lives. He desires even to give justice and to, to care for us and our needs. Let, let, me, let, let me have you think with me about our prayers to the Lord and what we can expect from him. Because we could take yesterday's teaching about being unworthy servants and we could say, you know what? I'm not even going to ask anything of the Lord. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an unworthy servant, so I'm not even going to bother him. That's not the point. The point of yesterday is to get an internal attitude right in terms of the way we approach the Lord saying, man, I'm his servant. But today, today is to get an external perspective right about his perspective on us, his care for us, his love for us. So if you want to turn with me to Luke chapter 18, here's where we're going to start. In chapter 18, verses 1 through 8, Jesus is speaking here. It says, and he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. I mean, just time out right there. We're to always pray, not lose heart. We could say, I'm an unworthy servant. I, I don't need to pray. No, no, no. Well, we don't lose heart. We go to the Lord with all of our cares and all of our concerns. Verse two, he said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him saying, give me justice against my adversary. Now, what, what do we know about this judge? This judge is not a good judge. This judge is not a God-fearer. He is not living in light of the word of God and the character of God that has been revealed. He, he doesn't care about what God uh, has said or who God is. And, uh, and along with that, he doesn't really care about his fellow man. He, he is not interested in what is best for others. He's only interested in what's best for himself. This is, by definition, this is the opposite of what a judge should be. A judge in any land should be someone who fears God, who understands what God has said and, and tries to judge fairly and accurately according to that. A judge should be someone who has compassion upon mankind, who should be serving people. And this is not the kind of judge in this story. Let's keep going says, for a while, he, the judge, refused. But afterward, he said to himself, though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said to her, see what the unrighteous judge says, and will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night. Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man comes, will he find faith on earth? There, there's a few things that, that are, are worth uh, marinating on today. There's a few things that are worth thinking deeply about today. I mean, if we, if we go back to that previous page, it, it talks about how this judge, his response to this, this woman who, who is incessant in her coming to him, she is looking for justice. And this, this wicked, evil judge, this godless judge, does not fear God, does not respect man. He, he says, I am going to do the right thing for this woman not because it's the right thing, not because I fear God, not because I want to do what's right in front of mankind. I'm going to do it because he says, she, she's bothering me. So I'm, I'm feeling like I'm beaten down by her, her relentless requests for justice. And then Jesus says, hear, hear what the unrighteous judge says. He says, will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him, day and night. Jesus says, look, you have an unrighteous judge and he's going to do the right thing, but you have the righteous judge, God Almighty. 
And he, in fact, he will give justice to his people. His people who cry to him day and night. It says he, he will bring them justice speedily. Now let's, let's talk about this second for, for a second. And then I want to go to this last phrase Jesus has. The, the justice Jesus brings speedily. And this is speedily, but what is speedily? It's, it's in the right time. In, in the right time, God Almighty will act. And, and he acts, and, and, and he's acting, but look what he's, examine what he's looking for. His elect who cry to him day and night. They are persistent in their prayer. They do not give up in their praying. They do not hesitate to go to the Lord asking for, for his help, asking him for justice. And yet this last phrase, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, when Jesus returns, bringing ultimate justice, will he find faith on earth? Will he find his saints persisting in prayer? Will he find men and women who have, who have been unrelenting in going to the Lord day and night asking for his hand, asking for his help, asking for his, his spirit to work in them, asking for justice, asking for righteousness, asking for an end to wickedness, not even against them individually only, but it, wickedness in the land. Now, this is, this is Jesus' observation maybe of our own lives. Will he find us persistent in our prayer? Will he find us looking to him instead of looking to our own merit or our own ingenuity or our own intelligence or our own plotting and our own designs? Or will he find us begging him for justice? like this woman was begging this unrighteous judge. You know, the ancient way for our modern day today, it is a clear call to pray. It, it is, a, it is, a, it is a, a, a ringing bell that's calling to you and I to say, don't hesitate. Don't, don't uh, slow down. Don't stop praying. Come, come to the Lord over and over. Come to him with your burdens. Come to him with your cares. Come to him with your hurts and your sorrows. Come to him begging for justice. And he speedily in his time and in his way, he will bring justice. He will bring justice. Now here's, here's the action step today. Here's the, the ancient way for our modern day today. It's to turn this video off the moment it ends. Then go to the quiet place. Close the door. And cry out to the Heavenly Father. Here are my needs. Here are my concerns. Here's the justice I'm asking for. Lord, please intervene. Maybe you're, maybe you're listening to this as a family. Maybe you press the stop button when this is done. And, and as a family, you all gather around in the living room. And you pray. Or at the, at the meal table. And you pray. And maybe you go around and you, you have even, even just each person pray one sentence prayer. Pray one sentence of a prayer. Say, Lord, here is our need. Here is, here is the difficulty we face. Here is the justice we seek and to pray as a family. This is the call to be persistent in prayer. So why don't you do that right now? Go to the Lord. Go to the Lord in prayer.